super welcome. Uh, my name is Dora, and I am the co-founder and CEO of Imagine Lab, where we equip uh, and empower girls to create with technology and join the movement to shape the future. But before I get into the details of, of how we are going about achieving this rather ambitious mission, um, I first wanted to address sort of the why. Why should anyone even care about gender equality in the tech industry? Uh, and why is it important that we have both women and men contributing uh, to creating the technologies that we use today and will use tomorrow? To, to address this, uh, why I wanted to bring up this a sort of logical exercise that has a base statement uh, simply stating that technology is the future. And I have a bunch of numbers backing this up from the fact that uh, the digital economy is currently valued at $11.5 trillion globally, and it is a big part of our, our GDP, to the fact that jobs being created in the tech industry are six times as uh, much as in general uh, in increasing employment. And actually, this is data from pre-COVID, so I'm pretty sure uh, it's an even bigger number right now. But as we can agree that technology is the future, the truth is that women today are not equally involved uh, in creating technologies. In fact, in the EU, we make up less than 17% of the tech workforce. And interestingly enough, this is a decrease from 10 years ago. This is not just the case in the EU. Uh, there are similar experiences and numbers in the United States as well. And the lack of women in the tech industry and especially in tech leadership is a global phenomenon. Um, and so following from these two statements that technology is the future and, and women are currently not equally involved in technology, we can drive to this logical result that unfortunately today, women don't have an equal chance to, to shape the future. But we at Imagine Labs believe that for technology to benefit everyone, uh, we need diversity among its creators. And when I talk about technology, it's not really just about the products that are being made with tech, but about the fact that technology is underlying all the businesses that are being started and that are uh, solving tomorrow's problems. And obviously as a founder, I do care a lot about startups and, and that's the space I know quite well. So common startup knowledge suggests that most of us founders actually look for, for startup, not startup ideas, but actually for problems that are relevant to us and solve those problems. But then really that's where the problem starts. What happens to the problems of people who are not intact themselves? Who's going to solve their problems? Who's to, going to innovate solutions for them? Um, so the gender bias and, and gender inequality to tech sometimes is only leading to sort of small inconveniences and, and awkward laughs. Um, there was recently an article written about our work at Imagine Labs in the Hungarian Forbes magazine. Um, I'm originally from Hungary, that's why. And you probably wouldn't notice, but in Hungarian, we don't have uh, pronouns that are gender specific. But what happened then when my friends who are international started to translate the article uh, to English is that the article kept referring to me as he. So my friends were asking, why what is that happening? And, and presumably, uh, because the article was talking about a CEO and specifically a tech CEO, um, Google's tra Google Translator's algorithm had to make an educated guess at what would be my gender. Um, and this is not just a single example. This happens very often when translating from one language where uh, the gender pronouns are not specified to another where they are. For example, when translating from English to, to Spanish, it would often be assumed that a manager is male and, and the receptionist is female. Some of these problems have already been addressed and, and Google, the team is working on it, but still uh, this problem persists. And as I mentioned, this is more sort of just a small inconvenience, but actually gender bias in tech leads to, to way uh, more significant problems as well. Um, for example, last year when Apple launched its uh, credit card, uh, it really had an impact on, on women's lives by demonstrably reducing their, their wealth and opportunity uh, for, for capital, for access for capital. So what happened here is um, actually discussed by the founder of Ruby on Rails, David Hansen, on, on his Twitter feed, where he explained that even though him and his wife managed their finances jointly and his wife had um, better credit scores, uh, he received higher credit limits, 20 times greater uh, credit limits than his wife. 
And this also wasn't just an isolated incident. The co-founder of Apple, Steve Wozniak, reported the same happening to him and his wife. And so when this problem was sort of uh, being addressed on Twitter, uh, Apple's response was that default was at Goldman Sachs, and Goldman Sachs said that default was at the algorithms. Um, and the industry sort of errors and misses uh, that miss out on, on women's perspectives continue. There are VR headsets that don't fit um, women's heads. There is voice recognition that only recognizes male voices. And there are phones being created that don't even fit women's hands and pockets together with technologies that would assume that all of us consistently carry our phones in our pockets. Um, and our industry has now sort of uh, came to the conclusion that probably these mistakes would be less likely to happen if there was more diversity among the creators of these technologies. But luckily, we already have women sort of picking up on these opportunities and addressing uh, the markets and the opportunities that would otherwise remain underserved and, and overlooked. So while menstru menstrual cycle tracking was initially missed by my Apple and its uh, comprehensive um, health monitoring uh, system, female entrepreneurs like Clue Thunder, Ida Tin stepped in to cater to this need. And she's not the only one. There is a wide array of, of uh, products and startups being built around overlooked problems, which are most often uh, problems that women have. So. Uh, I was sort of arriving to this point with the first half of the presentation, uh, why we need gender equality and diversity in tech. Um, and now I would like to address more the question of um, how we can get there. Um, so the, the women in, Black of women in tech in the industry has been referred to as sort of a leaky pipeline problem all the way from high school to college to early career, women are dropping out. Um, but this problem already happens earlier. And um, as a woman who has worked in tech and studied in tech, I have experienced how there is a decrease of participation by women. Uh, I've seen the, the lack of role models, but I've also benefited from a lot of programs addressing the problem. And I really set out to, to have a meaningful impact and started to research where could I have uh, the greatest impact, essentially. And that's when I found um, multiple studies that have pointed out that up until around the age of 11 and 12, girls and boys' interests are more similar in, in technology and science. And it's really in these early teen years when most girls uh, drop their interest for the field. So what I decided to do while I was studying at KTH, I did my master's degree there in human-computer interaction, is to use this sort of user-centered design approach and process to address this particular program. A problem, sorry. So we've been working together with girls in this age group to understand what are the things that they like and care about and how we could link those things together with programming and technology to make it more natural and fun for them to learn coding. Some of the biggest insights that we've gained uh, have been how social interactions and in the community are really important to this target audience. Also that girls like to be creative and express themselves. Uh, we learned that phones are definitely the number one device, much more used than computers um, a, among teenagers. And then finally, that we really have an opportunity by linking the things that girls already like to do and enjoy to do together with technology and coding to make it more uh, relevant for them, be that dancing or, or horseback riding. Uh, so what we came up with, uh, our first product, the Magic Charm, which I also have right here, is a programmable accessory that you can customize through programming straight from your phone. So in our app, uh, which I have right here on my phone as well, I pre-programmed using our built-in scrolling text function. Um, let's see, a scrolling app start <laughs> uh, to show all of you that you can really customize your accessory and create anything you'd like with code. So the way how this works is that users create with code with Python in our app. They can then upload those creations to their Imagic Charm, which then they can wear uh, and really show the world what they can create with code. And they can also share their projects within our app with the community, this way, both giving inspiration to, to their peers and also getting feedback through comments and, and interactions with other coders. 
we launched our app um, in May and started to ship out the Magic Charms this summer. And since then, I gathered uh, 1,500 coders. So I've created more than 5,000 projects, which is really a testament to how our product can be both sort of like a first step and, and more advanced uh, coding steps in, um, in the future. Um, and the reason why we see this is working is because the number one feedback that we're consistently receiving is that it is a good mix of fun and challenge. And that instant feedback that comes from the Magic Charm really drives the motivation. And I also wanted to point out how I really think of coding as sort of the new uh, literacy. So you can essentially learn coding as much as you learn new languages and the same way as you would perhaps learn languages through more creative ways like watching movies and and listening to music you could learn coding through colors and and creating different patterns but if you're more like the person who likes grammar and logic is the same way with programming where you can um focus more on on the logical operations and the math behind and i see that there's a couple questions coming in so i will address them uh quick uh, soon uh, just let me finish off with a few uh, slides here. Um, and something that's also really important when we're talking about um, addressing uh, girls and coding is really about building confidence as well. So beyond just gaining the actual coding skills, what we think is also important is understanding and learning how progress is made through practice and errors and mistakes are actually one's friends because for anyone who has done programming you probably know that uh, you will always have to be debugging you will always have to be learning from your own errors uh, coding is not easy and straightforward so it's really uh, planting the seed that learning from your own mistakes is the best way to to grow and just to put everything into a bit of context uh, it was about two years ago when we started out with our, our prototypes in last summer when we had our kickstarter campaign and now today we have our ios and android app um, as well as uh, the magic charms available on our web shop and since this week here in sweden also in design tour yet um, this is our, our founding team that really sort of lives and breathes the mission uh, we're three female founders from a, a diversity of, of technical backgrounds and essentially we're, we're driving uh, this community of creators and coders not only for the coding skills but we believe by equipping and empowering girls with with uh, these future proof skills they will be the next generation of female founders starting uh, new tech enabled companies and businesses and and uh, building new products uh, that serve the needs of, of women globally uh, so that was it from me you can check out our website and you can always get in in touch with me and let me also get to the questions in in the remaining two minutes so i saw a question regarding how practical it is to code on the phone so we do have a, a beta version of our web app and we see that it's going to be a next step right to uh do programming on a computer but actually by making it accessible directly from the phone we're really removing the first barriers and and the whole need of setup of having to sit in from the computer and by making it accessible on the phone it's becoming more of a social activity or an activity that one can do on the bus on the go uh, and from there it can grow um, into more complex programming so to say on the computer um, it's interesting um, with the mixed versus girls only audiences we uh so we do have programs and we've worked with summer camps which is both boys and girls and the product can be used perfectly well in schools as well uh, our product and our packaging is not gendered what is important is that all of our design process all of our evaluation uh when we get feedback is making sure that it's girls first that we are making it inviting for girls that girls enjoy it and can learn with it but turns out uh, through this process, we created a product that is also extremely fun for a lot of boys. Um, yes, so I think uh, I have addressed most of the questions, but if there are more questions, please just, just shoot them my way and I will uh, try to quickly answer in the remaining one minute. And thank you for, for all the comments. If you would like to get in touch, yeah, you can see my email and feel free to also get in touch through LinkedIn. I'm going to just leave my, uh, my LinkedIn right here. Thank you everyone.